Welcome to Independent Thought and Freedom. What do you do when the government breaks the law to hold on to power? This is a question that is facing the Guyanese people. In December, there was a historic vote of no confidence that according to the constitution was supposed to trigger an election in 90 days. The government was supposed to resign, parliament dissolved and new elections called. However, the government is still in power today despite several court rulings. There's a real danger that the vote of no confidence may have no effect whatsoever and that the elections will be called when they were originally due because there was one year left in any case in the government's term. Guyana has a history of vote rigging, of even the murder of political opponents, using cult groups, and Jim Jones is just the most famous one, and establishing party paramountcy, meaning that the party was above the government. In history books, you read about such situations leading to revolution. When you live through it, however, it's not so clear cut. You have to ask yourself questions like, well, can you win if you were to rebel? Do people have the willpower to stand up and fight for justice? Will the international community be on your side? Is it worth the inevitable chaos, the disruption, and even the possible loss of life that will occur? Uh, and are there still legal and moral means to effect justice? With us today is our friend Charandas Prasad, the former government MP who triggered this whole series of events. He joined us some months ago, and if you haven't seen that interview, please check it out. Today, we speak with Mr. Prasad again, since the courts have finally and definitively vindicated him and his position, yet the government remains in power. Welcome, Charandas. Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Megu. How are you, sir? Very good, very good. So you're still in Toronto, are you? Well, I have a net, a gut feeling that my life would be shortened if I should go back to Guyana now. I was threatened publicly in parliament by a parliamentarian on international TV and, and cameras. So nobody has done anything about it. Minister then of Foreign Affairs, Carl Greenwich, said he didn't know anything about any threat. So I am simply trying to preserve my life a little while longer. Yes, I mean, that, that's, that's insane um, that, that that could happen and nobody does anything about it. And, and, and that's, it seems like Guyana's history has been that of, of, of the government acting in a thuggish manner um, and, you know, the international community does not do anything. It's regional neighbors, whether it be CARICOM and the Caribbean community, um, don't do anything. And with, you know, we thought that those days were gone, but it looks like they're coming back. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Well, Kirk, let me tell you, let me first say this. There have been, or there, there has been several offers of war. Um, recently, a, a known political activist on behalf of the PNC who was arrested and charged and went to trial for attempting to overthrow the government. He, was at, uh, he attacked the office of the president and that my man by the name of Mark Benchkop, he said, once, um, if, if things don't go the way they're supposed to go, and he quite clearly said there will be riots. And he was charged and locked up. It was the then president, Dr. Barrett Jack Dale, who granted this man a uh, pardon and allowed him to come out. Wow. But and then Minister Jordan was speaking at the people, uh, uh, to the people in Bartica in Essequibo, the county of Essequibo. We call that the Cinderella County. And he said there'll be war. Now, what are these people doing? They are putting the fear of God into the minds of simple, ordinary, peace-loving individuals in the country. Yeah. If and they don't have and I want to be clear again. War, there will be riots. I, I want to be clear about this again, because this is really a behavior of the PNC, this violence, yes. this thuggery. When they are in government, they're violent. When they're 
in opposition, they threaten violence. It is a PNC. I mean, the, you know, people may say this is part, partisan or racist or, or whatever because they see the PNC as the African Party, but it is the facts. It is the facts. The, the PP, now, people have alleged when the PPP were in government after all the years of fraud under the PNC and, and you had the sort of reforms in 1992 and you finally had free and fair elections, and when the PPP were in government, people alleged that when the PPP were in government, there were extrajudicial killings and, and these sorts of things. And, and you know, I, I don't know what the, the facts are on that, but, but those things obviously also need to be investigated. But, but, the, um, but the open um, thuggery of, of the PNC is, is a characteristic. It, it, it is something else. And it's something that it's, it's as if people are afraid to call out. Um, because there's this whole discourse that um, around, you know, black people fighting for freedom or, or their rights. I, I think that's what they're, they're putting into. They're, they're taking legitimate black struggles from around the world, whether it be in South Africa, whether it be in the uh, United States earlier, or struggles against slavery, and then using it for oppression and thuggery. Yeah, you know, they, they are... Um, and and people have to call them out for this. You know, they, they you know people are, um, you know they 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 play footsie w um, with this. And and as you say, you know, Bar well, Jagdio let this per um, let this person out. This um, right uh, be, be, because they're scared. Be, you know, and uh, they, they, they're scared of the sort of international sympathy that that um, these movements can have. Because again, they draw on legitimate black struggle to um, exercise power in a thuggish, illegitimate manner, you know? So I, I just wanted to be clear when we talked about the government, you know, I was talking about the, the PNC and government before, and then now you're talking about the, um, what? the, the, the riot and violence against when the PPP were in government. Yeah, so please continue. But, Cor, let, me, let me say this, you know, what my concern is right now, I'm very seriously worried too about this fact. Carry come. Sister countries in the Caribbean are shut up. They are silenced. They are not saying a word about this illegal government. Just recently, President, President, in quotes here, Granger called a meeting of the diplomats. And they all attended because, of course, the head of state in the country that you've been posted to, that you're resident in now, invite you to a meeting, you have to go. But there is where Granger was trying to justify his existence or continued existence as president, not resigning, as Article 166 of the Constitution says. What they're arguing, they're saying that the CCJ did not set a timeline for election. Now, that to me is gross stupidity coming from a president. And he's supported by the likes of Kemrad Ramjatan, Minister of, Foreign, uh, Minister of Public Security in Guyana, who said that they are not going to resign. The CCJ did not say that you must resign. The CCJ said, having determined on the 18th of June at the ruling that the vote of no confidence was validly passed, Charandas Prasad was vindicated, his vote was valid, and so the no confidence motion was validly passed. Therefore, that triggers Articles 1066 and 1067 of the Guyana Constitution. What does it mean? To say something is triggered, it simply means, in my view, anyways, that it's in motion. Yes. One of six, six have been and seven have been triggered. Automatically, it's, it's automatic. That's how it works. That, and that one of six six, for those who are not aware of what that says, it's simple. One of six six says if a vote of no confidence is validly passed, the president and cabinet must resign. And then the likes of the attorney general. I always think that man's a stand-up comedian. He is at Basil Williams. He is asking yes. when they have to resign. The article is so clear. Exactly. It say when must resign once the vote of no confidence is passed. No, no, that, 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 that's a that's a serious thing, and and you know that that point. I mean, they they are. Uh, I mean. They're playing, oh, what is it, foolish with stupidness. <laughs> I mean, it I mean, is, he is saying, you know, so he's saying, oh, it, it says you have to resign, but they don't say when. I mean, that's right. Come on, what sort, 
I mean, wh- and, and how can anybody accept that? You know, for the listeners who aren't aware of the details, let's, let's go through step by step what happened, uh, what was supposed to happen, and, and how the government has held on to power despite clear, clear indication. The, uh, and, and, and I mean, clear, clear requirements that they call new election that they resign. So let's start from yeah. the beginning, right? So on the 21st of December, 2018, the vote of no confidence happened, triggered by yourselves. Yes. Right? So, so why didn't they resign straight away? So tell First, me. First, it was deemed then by the Speaker of the National Assembly, who is the authority, after a vote count was taken, that the no confidence motion was validly passed. And so... Article 106, 6 and 7 must therefore take effect. Now, let, let me ask you something. In, in Trinidad, yeah. uh, I think it, yeah, the president would, um, would be the one to formally dissolve the parliament. To, to, I, I, think to, I think the instruction yes. would have to come from the president yes. to Slight the speaker, and then, and, and then it would dissolve. Yes. Now... In Guyana, would it be the same thing? Would it, would it have to yes. come from the president? In this case, uh, the president, executive head. So he has to declare, <coughs> not the speaker, valid yeah. vote is taken, Article 106, 6 and 7 now kicks in. And the difference in Trinidad and Guyana is that in Trinidad, the president is not head of government. No, He's that's right. He's a figure like, uh, like the queen in England. Yes. Whereas right. in Guyana, the president is an interested party in the matter. The president yeah, yeah, the is president the head of government. So, so it, it automatically adds, uh, it, 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 you don't have the check and balances. So you're expecting no, it's his decision the government alone. now to, to, to act morally, to act ethically, to act legally. I yes. suppose in a reasonable society, that's reasonable. But, but uh, uh, clearly, this is not a reasonable um, society well, not. Dr. Megu, what, what happened? What, look at what happened. They took that to court. First of all, after the speaker deemed that the no confidence motion was validly passed, the then Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu and Attorney General Basil Williams publicly, publicly said that the election would have to be called within 90 days. Right. That was done. And, and, and so the president said what? what? Because the president, it, it would be incumbent upon him to dissolve parliament. So what, why didn't he? What did he say? Well, he didn't. They were, they were offered a, a way out or a delaying tactic was applied when Nigel Hughes raised the issue of the majority in a vote of no confidence in a house where it's 65 seats should be, excuse me, 34 yes. and, over 32. I, I, let me explain to, to listen. <laughs> I, I, what, what, well, okay, so who is this? Who is it, Nigel who? Nigel Hughes. His I wife is Kathy Hughes. Minister of Public uh, Information. Okay, so the Minister of Public Information. And I know the Attorney General had, had put that to the court. Now, Right, but he my, was my put to Nigel Hughes. Yeah, my understanding is that what they did is they, they took a case from Vanuatu, which is a small yes. little <laughs> island out in the Pacific, where they have an even, a an number, even of number of parents. I can't remember how much is it, 60 or 54 or something like that. Yes. And so in order, so that court ruling said that to find out what a majority is, you have to divide it by two and add one because obviously right. 30 out of 60 is not a majority. It would have to be 31. So, so what they said, which is so, I have to use the word, it's retarded. What they said <laughs> is that in a, in a 65 member 65. chamber, you need to divide it by two and add one because 33 is not a majority. This is so cynical. This is so cynical is not even the right word. It, it, it is, and I call it stupid. Yes, yes. But um, if, here's, here's, here's the, the logic serious. that was... You, you cannot be, they cannot have argued that in a serious way at all. But, well, they but, argued it in the court of appeal. This so, so where, where, oh, sorry. When did they... Because, but they, um, but that was, uh, that was what the government had argued um, at the, the lower court courts in Guyana, Guyana, correct? Yes. Very quickly. Uh, when did they uh, file it? The day from after? From the speaker, it was taken to court. The Honorable Chief Justice, like the day Roxanne, after George, Roxanne George said, 
33 is a majority, don't yeah. bring that stupidness. Right, so... so they, but what, they went to the Court of Appeal and two judges, yeah. two judges ruled that a majority, first you have to... And I listened to the judgment delivered by the acting chancellor, Justice Yonette Cummings. Yeah. I think that woman so stupid yeah. as a, a, a chancellor, she should resign. And exactly. I mentioned it already. No, no, that, that, that is pure incompetence and or corruption to imagine that I, I would say, say the last one applies there corruption big time because here's what happens if you divide 65 by two you get 32 and a half on each side you cannot round one side yeah and when yonet cummings that fool described when she delivered her judgment she said well you know it's 65 Divided by two, you get 32 and a half. You have to round it up to what and then plus one. Well, which side do you round up? Yeah, you have to uh, round both sides. You can't leave half a man uh, anywhere. But but the simple thing is a majority just means one over more than half, more than half. That's <laughs> all, more than half. That's all. So 33 is more than 32 and a half That's in any it. given month. <laughs> just more than half. That's all the majority is. So this was absolute corruption, incompetence, stupidity. Um, I, I call it stupidity. And, and Yonet Cummings, I don't know what she's hoping to get as a, a judge in the Court of Appeal because she was sidestepped by Granger who was looking to get some foreign judge outside of, the, of Guyana to sit there as a substantive chancellor of the uh, judiciary in Guyana. But, and so but, she was not going to be. But in, in, in terms of the process, I, I, I want to just get it straight. So when did they lodge that appeal? Was it the day after? Um, did they after, wait a while? After, after the court of appeal ruled against. No, no, no. The, the, sorry. The, the first, um, up, the, 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 the first ruling. challenge to the no confidence motion. Yes. Right? The, the first one. When, when was that high court. done? That went yeah. to the high court. And when? Justice George heard that in early January. Early January. Okay. And so, she ruled my vote was valid. Right. No confidence motion validly passed. Government must resign. Okay, be, be, because cause I'm just thinking of, of how it would have happened. Because <coughs> here it was that it was supposed to automatically happen. The president was supposed to write. So I guess what he was saying is that, well, there's an appeal that is yes. going to be filed by the government. But he himself is obviously not impartial. So that already taints the whole thing. Well, you see, I, I don't know how they're looking at it. In, in court, for example, just, just go to the criminal court. A man is charged and committed, uh, convicted of murder. He is sentenced to life imprisonment. His sentence starts from that very day. Mm -hmm. He's incarcerated. He cannot get out unless a special bail application is granted. But his sentence starts. Yes, exactly. Once an appeal is filed within 14 days, it's an appeal, but until that appeal is ventilated, he is still a convicted person. Exactly. Doing a yeah. sentence, starting to serve a sentence for murder. And, and, and this is an important point because after um, the acting chief justice, Roxanne George Wiltshire, <clears throat> so she ruled that the, it was valid, that your vote was valid because it challenged it because of dual citizenship, that right. 33 is in fact the majority. She said it was all valid. But, uh, but then they appealed it because they wanted to insist. But they that. should have resigned on that exactly. ruling. Because, because apparently she said that, um, she also said that, um, because I think the government asked for a stay of execution, correct? The government did, yes, and it was yes. refused. And she rejected it. Yes. So she that rejected it and said that, I believe the date she gave, because I'm looking at, at from the newspaper report, it says that the Chief Justice refused an application by the Attorney General for a stay of her decision and a conservatory order for the government to remain in office. Uh, so as the clock ticks towards the expiration of the 90 days on March 20th. So she refused that. So that means yeah. by March 20th, there was an uh, election that was supposed to happen. It should have been held, You're right. But election. they did not, right? Yes. And, and, and so even though... Uh, and so why was the Court of Appeal taking so long? Because it was January the decision was. This is the yeah. most important thing on the court roster. Um, and yet, the Court of Appeal itself did not deliver a ruling until after the 20th of March. What was the reason they gave? 
That that was to give the power, the government power, to remain there and allow them. You see, again, that illegality was supported by the Court of Appeal. And I, I don't know how else to say this. Yes. Because Granger and the president and cabinet should have resigned. Yes. And if the Court of Appeal upheld, as it did, they, they, they or, or gave them then, defeats the motion of no confidence that was passed, or deem it defeated, then they go back into office. But at that stage, there should not have been a government. They should not have, he should not That's have been right. president. So, what, but, so why did the, the court of appeal, did they give any reason why they took so long? Or they no, just... they don't. I'll tell you what is happening there, though. Yeah. That corruption, and I'm saying corruption, yes. fueled by affiliation. Yeah. They have connections on both sides. When I say both sides, on the, on the government side and in the, in the legal profession, yeah. a lot has been happening there because of a particular lawyer. Okay. One of those judges who ruled, one of them, was not only engaged to a lawyer who was pushing this appeal. Right. She, she, after her husband and her uh, was split up, they're still in a relationship. Now, right. they want to take me to court, let them go ahead. <laughs> but that is all the bully attitude that they're yes. applying to the people using the judiciary, the <laughs> highest goddamn court in the land, and you cannot rely on it for justice. That's what happens right. in an ordinary matter? Exactly. That is what worries me. I mean, I, I have to say that, that you know, I, I was pleased that in the, in the lower court, I mean, it was the yes. Chief Justice recognized Justice the argument as... Justice George Justice. is exceptionally brilliant, um, yeah. Dr. Megu. Very brilliant young lady. You know, and, and she recognized the foolishness of it. But, but then you saw the... <coughs> sorry. The... The... Um, the the Elections Commission, which is called uh, Geocom, right? Uh, Gcom, Gcom, yeah. G Gcom in uh, Guyana, Guyana. They started to say that uh, it would be impossible to hold the elections by March 20th in any case uh, because their list wouldn't be ready. Um, so they started to put in a little, uh, uh, another angle to delay elections, to, yes. to contravene the, the, the Constitution. So, um, and he was saying that no matter uh, that you, you wouldn't be able to have an election until November. Now, if, if you didn't pass the vote of no confidence, when were elections due? In around May of 2020. May of 2020. Okay. Yes. So, so November, so he was saying in uh, November 2019, uh, that was, that's what the, the elections, um, Commissioner was saying that November 2019 would be the earliest that you could have elections. That, so, that was, that that was don't, that's the illegal commissioner who, who was unilaterally appointed by President Granger. No. Yeah. So, it, to, to, to I, tell me why, why um, you call him illegally appointed at the time. I'll tell you. The Constitution clearly states that the op leader of the opposition must submit a list of names right. from which the president would select one person mutually agreeable, agreeable to both parties to be the chairman of GCOM. The, the, it's, the words that were used is the list must be not unacceptable to the president, two negatives. Right. So we figure the list must be acceptable. We'll leave so, that. To both. But so it has to be acceptable to both. Lists. Yeah. I, he I rejected be... three lists right. that the Dr. Jack, the, the opposition leader presented okay. and then decided, oh, well, I can't find somebody from your list. I'll appoint somebody. And so he appointed Patterson, a man who's 84 years old. Right. Retired justice. Now, the CCJ deemed that appointment illegal. Right. And even then, even then, Patterson did not want to resign. Until when, did they, when did the CCJ appoint, uh, decide, uh, determine that that appointment was illegal? The same day when all the rulings were handed down. I think okay. it was... Uh, all right. So... so so that was a ret that was a kind of retroactive decision, or whatever. right? Right. Okay. So so they ordered a new chairman to be put in place. A new chairman, and then okay. finally lists were submitted, meetings right. were held, and finally they decided on retired Justice Claudette Singh. So so let so let let's step step back and, and, and take it through. So so we so we had the the motion of no confidence. Then we had the court ruling that was in your favor. Yet. Um, the Court of Appeal resigned. And right. after the date when the election was supposed to happen, then the Court of Appeal 
yes. actually ruled in the government's favor, saying 33 is not a majority in the House of 65, which is absurd. It is Dr. like... Dr. Megu, let, 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 me, let me show you what people are missing. Yes. What people are missing, and those who notice are doing nothing about it. Yeah. That ruling after the 18th of March simply was useless. Because right. by the 18th of March, based on the Speaker's ruling in the House, the appeal made in the High Court, or the application made in the High Court on that ruling, the election should have been held by March 18th. Right. So having ruled after March 18th, it is way past time That's right. for a new election. That's so right. I don't know that the Court of Appeals ruling even should have had any goddamn effect. Those <coughs> judges are sick, the two of them. Exactly. No, no, that... in, in person should have no, known that, should have acted on it to have an, a, a ruling made before the 18th of March. But now, let, they let don't care. Did, did, the, uh, did the CCJ ruling touch on that issue in any way? Not, not on the, the time frame. Yeah. But it simply says, now that we have found at this stage, which is on the 18th, I think, of June, yeah. we are deeming, after their finding, the ruling made, they asked for consequential orders to be made, but listen to this. The Caribbean Court of Justice was a clean act. Justice Saunders said, we will give the parties some time, one week, yeah. to sit down and hammer out certain details. One, date for election, resignation of the president and cabinet, and then let us go forward. What did they do? On the, when they returned back on the, I think it was the 24th of June, one week after the ruling. Mm -hmm. I was there, I went to court that day. Remember, we met in Trinidad then. Yeah. They, there was no, con uh, no, or no consensus order between the opposition and the president or the government and the opposition. Mm -hmm. And so the CCJ said, all right, we want written submissions by the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. And we will then make our orders on the 12th of July. And those orders were made because they still couldn't come to an agreement. You mean Again, 12th of June or 12th of July? 12th of July. Yeah. 12th of July, the 1st of July after the, the consequential orders were not made on the 24th of June. Yeah. They had the 12th of July to submit written orders. And then by, sorry, the 1st of July for a ruling on the 12th of July. The orders were made and the word caretaker. Yeah. Caretaker was handed by Justice Saunders. This government becomes a caretaker government. President and cabinet must resign. Right. Well, that's what the constitution says. Why are they asking when? Why have they still not resigned? Exactly, exactly. And nobody, um, CARICOM people, the, the states, the heads of states, the foreigners, um, big, Ameri big bad America, yeah. Canada, um, England, nobody is stepping up to the plate to say, look, Mr. Granger, you have to resign. We're not going to listen to you. Their diplomats sat there like fools, listening to a man who's trying to justify sitting illegally as president of the country. Yeah, and, so, I mean, I, I meanwhile in, in Venezuela, they're trying to overthrow Maduro with um, yes, why do? For, <laughs> <laughs> they figure they have some oil contracts inside there and oil investment that they don't want to lose. Because, because I mean, I. Investment. I mean, uh, I, I guess we can, uh, we, we can jump to this issue a, a little bit now, but, but I, I do want to return to the timeline of the court. But the, the Americans uh, certainly appear to have interest. In, and, well, maybe we'll talk the, the details later, but, but I know there has been talk that the Americans facilitated the PNC... Um, uh, this is not PNC. I, I, what, what, what's the coalition name again? Apnu, Apnu AFC. Yeah, Apnu AFC. Now, you were part of that. I mean, I, I don't know if, if, if you can say anything at all. But people have said that, that um, the U.S. Embassy uh, granted a lot of visas around that time. That's no secret, you know. Yeah. So, so, I'll tell you what happened. What mm -hmm. happened during that time. And I was an AFC member actively involved in politics mainly to remove the PPP right? because of what I saw then as favoritism, um, <laughs> corruption, and I can't deny that. Yeah. But let me add this quickly. The, our government, the APNU, AFC combination, coalition government, in three and a half years, make the 23 years of Jagdeo and PPP, 
look they look like altar boys yeah because of what they have done in two or three and a half years sure. and i couldn't take it anymore but what we had then the afc apnu as a team we were not really separate afc right and apnu was just the name it was still pnc and everything yeah. that they did was pnc valda lawrence minister of public yes. health said publicly i am pnc my friends are pnc i will only give work to pnc people right now what do you do not just to the public what do you do to us as afc sitting beside you yeah and our people our leaders yeah. ramjatan and nagamutu they enjoy being minister and prime minister and respectively and they don't seem to give a shit about what's happening there so now do, does would you say that the the us government has has a preference for the pnc i put it to you this way they did in the past that's for sure there's no this, debate they did in the past this is how it works a friend of mine living in demarara yeah. and family applied for a us visa they didn't get it i said you know what the brother wanted to apply I said don't let the brother make the same mistake you made use an address in burbis and they were granted visa within a very short period of time the americans issued visa mainly to people in esequibo and burbis because, because they're big stronghold yes right to to, to deplete the number they even processed uh, uh permanent residence applications right. that were sitting for an eight year period might have been brought forward by five to five or six because i mean getting people out of burbis because i i there are more six and, and uh, region two because there are more the more Guyanese living outside of Guyana than in Guyana. <laughs> I, I I think that I found out when I went to the Kanjidi picnic uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the amount of my I mean uh, people may not know this but Guyana is the size of the United Kingdom and it only has what's the population 800,000 750,000 people. It doesn't even have a million people in yes. a, in a land the size of the United Kingdom and there's there are prop there they, there may very well be a million Guyanese in New York and Toronto and Miami and, um, you know, I, I don't know how many in London and, and so forth, but around the world, definitely, New Jersey. I, I think, I think we're, a more, we're more than a million outside of Guyana. Any yeah, yeah. I, I, even up and down the Caribbean, you know, yeah. when, you, when you add that. So, uh, so the phenomenon of migration is extremely significant. And in fact, in the past, it was actually used in the vote rigging process and 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 this vote rigging has been um you know observed by you know election observers uh, from the united states from jamaica from uh canada from the uk you know that things like uh overseas voting um that was the, that was one of the mechanisms that they used to to rig the election to to, to um Dr. Bingo, let me interrupt you since we're on rigging let me tell you what is a fact richard allen member of parliament backbencher on the pnc side told me one day that he is very tired he's busy moving around in the interior mining areas what was his work you think the man said they're registering people for birth certificates who are all illegal people. Right. And now we're hearing of Haitians going into the country in droves. They're going to register them, give them a birth certificate, meaning then they can get ID card and so right. they can vote. And that is one of the rigging machinery yeah. that they were looking at. Because if you put all, all the black people, and let's deal with this one on a racial level, with greatest apology to my African brothers and sisters out there, and the Indians also, Guyana is not at all bordering on race, except when it comes to election time. Right. And this present government, Granger and team, if they get all the blacks to vote for them, they will still end up with about 29 seats in parliament, nothing more than that. Right. And they cannot, because a lot of the black brothers and sisters out there really hate them, you know, not just dislike them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hate them. I was told so often by people who voted for us in Burbis, we're not going to vote for you again. Y'all are not doing anything for us in Burbis. No. And some of the things that were mentioned, you know, we can't elaborate on that. But yeah. that was one of the methods of rigging the election. Yeah. And you know what? Even if they put out 20,000 votes more, 
from the illegal aliens. Give them birth certificate and have them register. The PNC or the, I am saying PNC, AP and UAFC combination, the coalition cannot win the election. Yeah. They cannot win the election. Even if they put in 20 outsiders to vote, they can't win the election. All right, let, let, let's get back to the, to the timeline so, so we can see all the, all the things that, that are keeping this ungovernment unjustly in place. So, so the Court of Appeal ruling was made after the, they sh should have resigned. And then so um, luckily, I, I would have to say luckily, you have the CCJ, which is why we, we in Trinidad and in many places in the Caribbean still prefer to use the Privy Council in the UK because of so many conflicts of interest yes. in the local scene. But anyway, so... Connections uh, to judges. Yes. <laughs> so the... Um, uh, so that took a little while because it was, it was by June, right? So yeah. June, the CCJ ruled that, that the, lower, the, the lower court was correct, that the no confidence right. motion was uh, they overturned the appeal valid uh, yeah the, so they, the ruling of the court of appeal right and um and then they they said that you, they needed a consensual appointment for the um elections um commission and and so they appointed somebody now uh so so even though the government was illegal because they should have stepped down by the 20th of march government they, is illegal still yeah, illegal yeah but but they and, and so the most I suppose they said is that it has to be a caretaker government. But yes. let me ask, uh, has the government, um, since the motion of no confidence, passed any legislation or done anything that, you know, is consequential? Well, they have foreign companies going in and they're signing up multi-billion dollar contracts. Right. I don't know if these companies, I wrote a, a I did a Facebook post just the other day. Mm -hmm. I hope they realize that those contracts won't be binding. Kurt, let me tell you quickly, cabinet, president and cabinet simply means President Granger. Yeah. Now, we, they have about 27 or 26 ministers, but not all the ministers are members of cabinet. <laughs> let, 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 let me Valerie start with this. Jaipal Sharma, yeah. Annette Ferguson, uh, Valerie Patterson. Um, these are ministers in the government but they're not members of cabinet. So right. when cabinet is sitting, only the senior ministers are there. The okay. junior are not there, even though they're ministers in the government. So what, 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 that is, uh, what that does is cabinet can pass anything in excess of $20 million. It's like um, magistrate court and high court. Yeah. Magistrate court in Ghana can only sentence you to a maximum of five years yeah. for any offense that's tried at the magistrate court. And then it goes to the high court from zero to life. The cabinet can pass contracts or approve contracts and bills that are way over in excess of $20 million then, from zero to billions. Right. So, so, so that, let's talk about this because some of the listeners may not know about what's happening in Guyana. It's, it's just over the past few years. I don't know when it started, but you had huge oil discoveries. Well, how long yes. ago did that start? Three years ago, maybe? Well, when we got into office, the findings were already um, brought forward okay. or exposed or not really exposed. Yeah, yeah. But made public. And, yeah. Um, I'll give you a quick example. From the mouth of the then U.S. ambassador, yeah. the Lisa One, one oil well in Guyana, is equivalent to a hundred oil wells in Trinidad. Yeah. Your Trinidadian, yeah, my yeah, yeah. Trinidadian brothers and sisters there can put yeah. a number, to, uh, can, um, can just widen their imagination in terms of oil. I mean, you're, what, what you have there, as opposed to what we, we had in Trinidad, which, which you know, sustained us for so long and made us you know, the, right. the richest okay, Caribbean okay. territory yes. for so long. What you all have in Guyana dwarfs anything. Your, yes. your thing is like Qatar and Kuwait. The, the, and, word, the word is Guyana will be the next Saudi Arabia of, the South, of South America. Yes, yes. I mean, Ven we you're next to Venezuela. And Venezuela has the largest, has lo more oil reserves than Saudi Arabia, right? I mean, we're yes. next to Venezuela, but we're a tiny little island. You're the size of Great Britain. So, I mean, so it's just in incredible. It's mind-boggling. What, what they've discovered by 
by you all. So now, President Granger, by staying in place, um, by staying in place after they're supposed to resign, has been signing contracts. Yes. Now, these contracts will be with the government of Guyana. And um, so, so if they if they get removed, which is most likely by the election. So they will be removed. Yes. By the so, so they, it wouldn't um, personally um, affect them in any case if they do sign the contracts. Well, what, what advantage does it have to him to be signing these contracts? Is there uh, any? The thing is, it, there's no advantage because once they get kicked out, they won't have access to all this wealth that they're dreaming of. Yeah. They won't have control over anything. But right. what is happening? I honestly don't know why the business people cannot say we're going to wait until after election before we sign any contract. They're expecting that if I don't take this, somebody else will take it. And so I will lose out. And that is the only reason I am guessing yeah. that the foreign companies who are going in there yeah. are allowing themselves to be lured into a contract. Sign it now so I can get this or somebody else will take it. Right. But those contracts, I pray and I hope that the PVP would have enough guts when they get into office yeah. to rescind all those contracts and put those people out on the street somewhere. So now, okay, now here, here we're going to start to get into maybe some, it has to be speculation and, and on the internet, but because the, the interests of the Americans are extremely important in, in the whole history of Guyana because yes. they were the ones who, who, who destroyed it by politics by ripping apart the PNC and PPP and then um, assisted the PNC in fraudulent elections. Power. Yeah, and, and, and all of these things. And, um, and the Americans, you know, were, you know, were facilitating um, Indians and PPP supporters going to the United States during the elections. So, so they still have a hand in it. Now, but after the ruling, after the, the CCJ ruling, where they said the motion of no confidence um, is valid, that new elections need to be called, um, I believe it was, yeah, I have it here. I'm, I'm looking at the newspaper reports. The United States Ambassador to Guyana, Sarah Ann Lynch, the United Kingdom High Commissioner to Guyana, Greg Quinn, and the head of delegation of the EU Union to Guyana, um, they issued a joint statement. Uh, no, that's after July they issued the joint statement, right? But yeah, so so you're saying yeah. So let's take it from June to July. So June, the CCJ made the ruling, but um, but what they didn't give orders until July. Is that correct? The twelfth of July, right? Okay, all right. So you had the ruling, then you had the orders. So after the orders were done, the U.S., the U.K., and the EU. And interestingly, Canada was not a part of it, although Canada figures a lot into the, uh, to the mining industry as a place where many Guyanese uh, have gone to and live and where you are right now. The Canadians have done or said nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, and, and because they, they have great economic interest in Guyana in the mining sector. Yep. Um, so, but... These three countries issued a statement uh, saying the Caribbean Court of Justice, Guyana Supreme Court, has spoken. It is important for the rule of law that all invoked actors abide by its ruling by the Constitution and the relevant provision of the Constitution. We urge everyone to do so expeditiously. So they seem to be um, pushing for support for new elections. Yes. Right. So... Um, Again, abide yeah. by the Constitution. Right. But mm -hmm. here, the thing is, even though they made the statement, Kemraj Ramjatan, Minister of Public Security, publicly said we're not resigning. Granger is not moving in that direction. And nobody seems to want to do anything. That's I'm, right. I'm saying this because, you know, we can all, yeah, any country can say something. Do something about what is happening. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. Exactly. Because sanctions immediately recall a goddamn ambassador from various countries. Send them home. Because the whole history of Guyana and the PNC and government in Guyana in particular, that's what I'm talking about, is this brazen disregard of... For, for all kinds of laws. Of Yes. And, 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 and that they will simply disregard. And so people could say all the... 
you know, I, and, and this was a, a problem, uh, you know, and this is a problem. What do you do? Because I, I know Chetty Jagan when, when he was um, the opposition, opposition leader for so long during all that fraud, during all that um, rigging. Yeah, rigging. Um, you know, because people were saying, because it was the time of revolution, of socialism, of communism all over the third world and in the 70s and 80s. Um, people had suggested that to him and he totally rejected uh, totally rejected any armed uprising, um, and uh, I'm I, I'm I'm not saying he should have done so at all. But but I mean it reached that level of desperation where people were were saying, you know, what can you do against this government? And and as you said, the the international community, they are. I mean, okay, they gave a statement that you should follow the constitution, but there are no consequences. Right. There are no consequences right. whatsoever because. The government just smiles and says yes. I mean, it, okay. If if we try to be fair, as generous as possible, to the to the government, to try to figure out what they're doing now, right? So what what is it? They're, what are they waiting for? They're waiting for. Okay, he, here's one thing. It seems that they're waiting for. Um, it's a political commentator, attorney at law, Christopher Ram is awaiting a high court hearing and decision on his request for an order to be issued for elections to be held no later than September 18th. Right. So, so there, is it that um, GCOM, are they waiting for GCOM, the elect, they're waiting for word from GCOM? I'm trying to figure out what, the, what is the excuse they're using. Let me shed some light into that, um, Dr. Megu. Yes. What, again, the ruling came from Justice Roxanne George. Right. In a Christopher Ram's application, what the judge said, and everybody's running around. So, oh, so Ram was the right. of the court. Ram is not Basil Williams. He doesn't lose cases that easily. Right. What the judge said is present supplementary affidavits okay. to show that G comes house to house registration will in fact cause elections to not be held on or before September 18th. What does all of that mean? It simply says what these fools are fighting over, that there is a timeline for election, first of all. And September why September 18th? 18th. September 18th. <coughs> why, why that date? Because that will be from June 18th to September 18th will be the 90 days. Right. So, so in other words, so... The ruling of the CCG so was the government the bought themselves time what happened is the government bought themselves time by playing foolishness by arguing this foolish thing that 33 is not a majority yes by going after may 20th <laughs> by using the court process to delay a decision they were able to buy four months they were able to buy four months and so now instead of march uh september is now the date people are saying that election should happen, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, right. based, based on the ruling of the CCJ, yeah. the 90 days would have elapsed on the, the, the 18th of September. Mm -hmm. But Justice George, having said that, show me in supplementary affidavits, Mr. Ram, that house to house registration will cause elections to not be held on or before September 18th. Present me with something like that. Okay. And then we will take it from well, there. Okay, well, what about um, the new um, GCOM chairman? GCOM chairman. Justice What's her name? Justice. Singh? Um, well, she was sworn in only on Monday, you know. Just, just no okay. View. Okay, so she was only sworn in a few days ago. A couple of days ago, right. Yeah, a couple of days ago. So, so what, what that does, it simply says we now have a legally appointed GCOM chairman by the, um, somebody mutually agreed to by yeah. the two parties, the opposition leader and the president. Yeah. Justice Singh is noticed, uh, noted um, or, or known for her very clean stand. Yeah. And my take on that personally, integrity is her forte. Right. This lady will look at how she's going to look. If she takes a side, whether it be for the opposition or for the government, she wants to do what is right. Yeah. So the first thing she will have to look at is whether or not Election will be held or should be held, first of all, and can be held by September 18th. Right. My guess is she will find that that date is effective 
and then look now at GCOM's effort to have house to house registration. House to house registration is another scam by the yeah. PNC to register these foreigners who are in the country. Okay. That is what they're doing. Okay. The list, GCOM is doing nothing except updating lists and keeping things going. Because they should have had an updated list, and the list is updated simply. Yeah. 14 year olds have to be on the list. All debts at the end of the month must be submitted by the registry mm -hmm. to GCOM so that they can delete these names. Yeah. Why are they saying they got 20,000 dead people and so many youngsters who are not on the list? Why? Yeah, because they haven't been keeping it up. Yeah. But April 30th was uh, the deadline for so the, the, the list. For, the list for expired the, on the current list. list. So right yeah. now there's no voters list. Is that is that right? Well, there is, but it's an expired list. An and expired. It, but it, the thing is, it can be updated by what you call the errors and omissions. Right, right. So, and, and the old GCOM, under the old illegally appointed chairman, basically yes, allowed right. it to lapse. Right. He, he allowed it yeah. to lapse because it was under yeah. his watch. From December. From yeah. December. Yes. 21st, 2018. You were looking at the possibility of election in 90 days. Why did you not look to have your list updated? Mm -hmm. The yeah. list would not have expired at the 18th of March, but did you make any effort to have it updated from December to the to, to end of April even? Yes, yes. So you wait until it expires and then say, oh, the list is not good. Now we have to start a new list. Yeah. Something is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Exactly. Everyone, that is what worries me. Yes. The blatant abuse of privileges, facilities, laws, our constitution in particular, are being allowed or, or is being allowed to carry on, continue. Yes, yes. So, so, and, and what the last um, illegally appointed chairman was saying was that basically you're saying uh, not only did he allow the list to expire and lapse, you're saying, well, uh, it doesn't matter when constitutions are legally due, I mean, when elections are legally due, um, because it's up to us when elections are due when we say <laughs> the list is right and uh, it's, what it's up to them yeah. if it's a straight process of a normal date yeah but in a vote of no confidence the constitution the supreme law of the land right. dictates and so states right. election within 90 days whereas the, is a sick old man so so the, so the new uh chair chairperson claudette singh will yes. most likely say, well, listen, we are constitutionally mandated now yes. uh, for the 18th of September. That's right. So we have to do whatever needs to be done to get to it ready that by no or, later. Or here's the big or. Yeah. And I'm guessing this is what will happen. Or the big or is an extension of that 90-day period must be agreed to by the opposition <laughs> leader if it's requested by the government. So I am again, I'm saying that the, the opposition leader may consider going into October. Right. But he is not going to go December. He may, and I'm saying may, yeah. but it is my view, my firm belief that the opposition leader would be willing to facilitate GCOM right. to assist Justice Claudette Singh because she's taking over a pile of mess mm -hmm. to put things in order and gave her an additional month. So we're looking probably mid-October would be the final date for election. And that is my take on it. That's my, my firm belief. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's, it seems that everything will be, um, it, it seems that it's on track for September 18th elec election. Well, it, I'll tell you what else though. Myself okay. and, and my, I, I hate to say my lawyer, you yeah. met him, Sanjeev Dattadev. He's more a friend than a, my lawyer. Right. But of course, he's my lawyer. He represented me. He filed the application on behalf of Charandas Prasad at the, court of, at the CCJ after the, high, the Court of Appeal rule in Guyana. Um, we were going to file an application in the CCJ to have definitive instructions given in relation to the ruling. But with the appointment of Justice Claudette Singh as GCOM chairman, and we, we all agree that she's a brilliant lady. Yeah. She will make those rulings. So we are not going to the CCJ anymore. Right. We okay. will just leave it to GCOM and the chairman, the newly appointed chairman for GCOM. Right. So 
what that has done though, Dr. Megu, it has given both sides. And those who will, might, might jump up and say, oh, she's Indian, she's this, she's that. Forget them, we'll ignore them. They're always going to have that. But yes. we, on both sides, there is the feeling that this lady will handle matters judicially correct. Yes. Legally correct. Mm -hmm. Constitutionally appropriate. So I don't see a problem at all. And I'm almost like 90% certain that I won't be disappointed. Right. So now let, let's, if, if we just sort of step back to see what, what would be the, the uh, APNU AFC's interest in extending it as far as possible? Is, 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 is it that... Right, um, illegal aliens. Right, right. That is the only thing that can help them. They think they can get through with that, but it'll help them to get more votes. Right. But they're not going to get enough to win an election. So PLC now, never won an election in Guyana, never. Now, under, um, under uh, the new chairman, Claudette Singh, uh, would it be, do you think it would be impossible to register these illegal aliens? Or? Well, it will not be impossible because you are appointed as a GCOM, uh, you're, you're part of the GCOM team registering people. You're sent in the interior, no judge is going to be there with you. Yeah. You meet a bunch of people on the way going, and look, you just issue board certificates to them. Right. And they may oh. even have board certificates ready, signed, to just yes. fill in a name. All those are possibilities because you know who's the Minister of um, Immigration? Winston Felix. Okay. PNC man. He was former Commissioner of Police. Right. So that is how that was expected to have been done. And the vote of no confidence simply shattered that dream totally. Right. Because they were in, like, brain, I don't know. Right. They were yeah. lost. Yeah. So, so basically, um, they were looking to extend their hold on to power, hopefully um, through registration fraud. Yes. Uh, and then uh, probably fraud. through all the oil, oil and gas wealth that would have been um, coming in. Um, with the new industries coming in on stream. So, so they would have hoped that they would have held on to power that way. Because yes. otherwise, I mean, I, and, and then, then this is the other challenge um, Guyana faces after. Because otherwise, then it becomes almost a one-party state with the PPP on the other side. And, and that was leading to the corruption. Why you yourself right. were in the AFC because they were in power for so long. And when any party is in power for so long corruption comes in complacency all sorts of things yes. so so then i suppose this, in future there will be that struggle um to to deal with afterward uh to make sure that 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 you know that corruption you know that's associated with long rule by one party um, and and then to I guess to to have a more vibrant system where there'll be more competition and and things like that. But but right now there's this you know there's this party that's just holding on illegally to power. So so there's really a whole series of long term issues to deal with with Guyana's politics. Do you agree with that? Yes. And um. But what 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 is failing these people? Moses Nagamutu, the prime minister, and Kemra Dramjatan claim they're from Burbis. When we went for local government election, I was one of the persons speaking at that platform. Right. We had 19 people on the quarantine who yeah. attended that meeting. The Prime Minister, Minister of Public Security, Charandas Prasad, a member of parliament. We All we had as audience was 19 people on the quarantine. Right. If you go now without me, the only people you might have would be their security uh, detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. People don't want to see them at all, mm -hmm. especially after Charanas has just turned on them. Yeah, yeah. So hey, myself yeah. and Dr. Ramaya are no longer with them. They can't even get. Yeah, I, I think if they get yeah. twenty votes in Burbis, they get so, twenty. So AFC is basically dead now. Is it is a dead party. party. And and and, and, and what's your relationship with them? Your persona and non grata. It was Kemra Dramjatan, Minister of Public Security who has been, not carefully, I don't know if the people are seeing this. The fight that I am experiencing is not coming from PNC people. Right. It is coming from the likes of Nagamutu, David Patterson, 
and Kemrad Ramjatan. Right. These are AFC people, people yeah. that I worked so hard to put in office. Right. And now, because I voted against them for having, because, because they have lost their identity as AFC. They are PNC. Yeah. And they want to simply hold on to power. Why are they fighting to stay in a coalition that has so blatantly been abusive to us as AFC? Right. Why? I don't know. Yeah, except that they want to hold on to power. And what power when they don't have support of the people that they had before? Seven seats. Yeah. To and give them a one seat majority. They're not going to even get two this time. Yeah. Just a kind of procedural question again. Uh, during the time since the motion of no confidence, has the parliament met again at all? Parliament was meeting, has been meeting without the opposition. Okay. Okay. So, 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 and so they've just, so, but did they make any decisions, pass any laws or anything like that? They have passed a few. Remember, one of them is where Granger had said that, um, people who are in possession of 30 grams or less of marijuana will not be imprisoned. Yeah. I don't think that bill was tabled, right. the marijuana bill, because the Narcotics and Psychotropic Substances Act has to be, well, it's an act, a legislation, a yeah. constitutional um, legislation. You can't just change that because the president wants it, president wants it changed. Yeah. What they may do is, Basil Williams may advise magistrates to not sentence people, but it is not yet law yes. and it can't be law until it's passed by parliament. Right, right. So, okay. So, but uh, because I was wondering if any laws were passed, if they'll... I am not... What, what would happen to that? Would it have to be reviewed? Yeah. Done in parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Imagine they're still looking to prepare a budget. <laughs> <laughs> these, these people are jokers, man. But how could they do that? Because they, they don't accept that September, September 18th is, um, is the election date. They, they don't accept it? Um, they have not yet so far. Really? So my, my take is by the end of this week, today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, we will be hearing from GCOM. I am almost certain. Okay, okay. So, so, so they have not accepted it yet. And I suppose when GCOM, when GCOM says it, they we'll see what they say but um but so so really so they have not accepted it as yet so they have really no. not accepted the ccj ruling no so again saying that they should by the caribbean countries by the big uh the big countries saying that they, they should is all right we all know they should yes what are you doing wow by the fact about them what are you doing about them not abiding by those wow. regulations, uh, legislation. That's those definitely rules. something you have to look out for. Uh, yes. So when GCOM makes its decision, which in all likelihood is going to be elections by September 18th, no matter what. Right. What is the government going to say? I, 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 I can't see them saying no, but I, I don't. But I, I, I would never imagine they would say 33 is not a majority. In but do you see so, the crisis that is, that is looming? No, I'm Dr. Megu. Do you see what is happening? What if GCOM, yeah. um, because of a, a substantive, very decent, in, uh, integrity conscious chairman now or chairperson, what if GCOM says, we will have election, we will be ready for election on or before September 18th? Yes. The government is still, the president is still sitting as substantive government and president. Yeah, yeah. Now, what if they, oh, we're not going to resign. We have to dissolve plastic parliament yeah. and get yes. out on the election campaign. That's right. That's right. So parliament has not been dissolved yet. It was supposed no. to be dissolved. No. So that is something that we should anticipate major conflicts. Yes, yes, yes. So, so he, the president has not yet dissolved it following no. the motion of no confidence. And he should. So the CCJ didn't give any orders that um, parliament should be dissolved? No, but the CCJ said Articles 106, 6 and 7 have been triggered and the government will function as a caretaker government. The word caretaker was used. Yeah. But, but, else, but, what but, other but they didn't say parliament should be dissolved. No. So that's something sure. they missed out. They should have said that. Well, that is why we were looking to go to the CCJ for specific 
Yes. Or definitive orders in relation to the ruling and the substantive orders that were made. Wow. That's what we're looking to do. Okay. So now say this, but again, because it was deemed that the Constitution Articles 106, 6, and 7 have been triggered, it's safe to say election within 90 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's no ifs and buts about it. Yeah. But election in 90 days, but Parliament has not been dissolved yet. Right. So, so yeah. That, so, again, it's still, it's still something that I am wrestling with. Yes, but yes, yes, yes. What has anybody done? Nobody exactly. has done anything hmm. to stop yeah. these people. Well, let, let, me, let me just bring it around a little personally for now, for you, in terms of what's your future going to be like? Because um, it has <laughs> been ruled that uh, you're no longer eligible to, because of your dual citizenship. Uh, I mean, e fine. even if you were to find safety in Guyana, you know, uh, are, are you disqualified from, from running for elections? I, yes. Okay. All right. Yes. And so to are people like the, the guys running the Fed Up Party. They're all, one is Canadian and the two of them are Americans. Right. Holding dual citizenship. I don't know why they're even contemplating running or form, why they formed a party. But with Charanas Prasad's motion of no confidence that he supported in, in December, on the 21st of December, 2018, a lot, a lot has happened. Yeah. It is clear if you hold dual citizenship, you cannot sit in parliament. And now it is up to parliament, perhaps the clerk of parliament, to, I, I, um, to clearly examine potential members yeah. and check their immigration records to ensure that you're not traveling on a foreign passport. Right. You do not have a foreign passport. So yeah. I can't sit. But honestly, Dr. Megu, yeah. parliament was paying me literally peanuts. It's not like other countries, Nigeria and all these places where as a parliamentarian, you're earning big bucks. That's I was true. getting any member of parliament who's not a minister, except for the opposition leader and chief whip, what we're getting, was getting 260,000 Guyana dollars. Yeah. That's like about 1,300 US a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And as a lawyer, I spend one week in parliament. During budget time, it's like three weeks. Mm -hmm. I lose, I lose yeah. a lot more than that, three, four times more than that. So parliament was not a plus for me in terms right. of earnings. Yeah. But it was nice because I felt that I could represent the people and make some yeah. form offer the people in my region some sort of representation. That was not allowed at all. Mm -hmm. I, I was not allowed to say anything except what they wanted me to say. I was not allowed to even make recommendation because they would just ignore them. Yeah. And when the closure of the Kanji estate, Sugar Estate in Kanji where we live, when I objected to that, to our team, the 12 mm -hmm. AFC members, including Prime Minister Nagamutu and Ramjatan, they said, no, 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 the estate has to be closed. Sugar is not making money. So I was shut down. Mm -hmm. And having sat there for three and a half years, and you can't do anything for the people, you can't say anything that will have any effect in parliament, even to your AFC people. Mm -hmm. I, I was fed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was fed up. So uh, do, you can, do you see yourself continuing... Uh, in politics, even if not as a, as a representative? Or you know not? what? I'll say yes, because yeah. I will bet money that once parliament reconvenes with whoever is president, it doesn't matter, they will move to have that no, uh, dual citizenship thing removed. Right, right, right. Because yeah. a lot of foreigners, responsible, brilliant, would like to be there. Yeah, yeah. Would because like so many guys, as you said, more, there are more Guyanese outside of Guyana. Yes than in Guyana. And, and, and many and for, have contributed on both sides. Yeah, yeah. Financially, yeah. academically. And they can, right. they can make very, very viable contributions in Guyana exactly. if they're allowed. So I'm That's guessing right. they will remove that. Yeah, because Gu yeah. Gu Guyana will be depriving itself of vital human resources. Yes. Especially of, now. Yeah, yeah. Now that we need our, our human resources. There are a lot of people. I have a nephew who's a civil engineer with a Bruce nuclear generating station in Kincardine. Yeah. yeah. A man like that in Guyana would do well. Yeah, there, there, there no, are many, there several, several. Exactly. There, there are many Guyanese who have done well in the field, in business, in academia, in, in, uh -huh. in all sorts of fields, you know. So, there are doctors well, who go from America and Canada yeah. to do medical outreach in Guyana, spending their own money, moving out in various areas to help people. You yeah. know, these are people who are just 
Guyanese conscious, I should say, or Guyana yeah. conscious. That's, they just want to help. That's right. They just want to be there to assist. Now, would you um, would you associate yourself with any political party now? Or I have not taken that stand yet, but yes, I will, and I'm saying yes, I will, because there is a need. Yeah. Charanas Prasad is well known, and I honestly think that if I ask Party A or Party B to do certain things, they will. Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing. Well, not guessing. I'm sure that they will because I will only be asking for what can benefit people. Right. People mm -hmm. who have worked to put you there. Yeah. Yeah. On both sides. Because I, I mean, I know you were very critical of the PPP and your your whole move to the AFC. And you said so in this interview too, that you know the PPP yes. were corrupt and you know when they were in office. They were very complacent with the Indians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know how that goes. I figure if I ask anybody, if you yeah. are given a chance to go back in life, what age would you pick? Many will say 16 or 18. Yeah. Because you do things differently. Yes. So the PPP, I'm guessing. I, I well, I shouldn't say I'm guessing. Uh, Dr. Jack Dale, the opposition leader at a very big meeting in, in Burbese. Yeah. Admitted. And first and foremost, if you're a drunk man, for you to be treated by Alcoholic Anonymous or whoever they are, you have to admit that you're a drunkard. Yes. That you have an alcoholic problem. Mm -hmm. If not, you're not going to look to have it fixed. You have a problem with smoking or whatever it is. Jack Day was admitted that they were very complacent with the Indians in Guyana or the people in Burbese. Yeah. And that will not happen again. Right, right. So, you know, they're looking at where they stepped wrongfully or where they, now, they now, let, let me ask you to expand on that. Very complacent with the Indian. Because, you know, uh, a lot of people are fearful, especially a lot of, you know, um, afro uh, You know, they've, they've complained that the PPP, well, first of all, that uh, they'll never see political power in Guyana. They will be discriminated against. They will be blocked out of having any political um, influence in Guyana if the PPP are in government because the PPP is an Indian government. Um, and so the PPP is only going to be looking after Indian uh, concerns. So, so this is what people say. This is their fear. Um, and, uh, and to hear this, that uh, the, the PPP may be saying that, um, you know, they'll, they'll look after the poor rural Indians, uh, you know, more diligently than they did before. A lot of other people might be saying, well, look, this is just going to be yeah, an Indian be racist right. government. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this is going to be terrible for black people in Guyana. What, but it, what it's no, no, Dr. Megu. Linden, which is predominantly black neighborhood. Yeah. Linden, were, first of all, they were given $25 million a year from the PPP just for sports. Okay. If mm -hmm. you give me $25 million in Region 5, or Region 5 and 6 combined, yeah. we're going to be happy, you know, we'll build five playgrounds every year. Yeah, yeah. 23 years, mm -hmm. man, you almost have close to 100 playgrounds after that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So that, that is <clears throat> something that they should not even entertain. Right. The PPP is not a racial party. That's the next thing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jagan was heard by the legendary Dr. Balram Singh Rai a lawyer, to start putting Indians in position because the blacks have been taking over public service and certain area police and all of that. And it was not a thing that Jagan would have done and did do. He did not. Right. He didn't want to stand out as a favorite of the Indians. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be a Guyanese leader. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that to me was not or still is not something that the PNC are looking at yeah no yeah. i i, I think it's most concern is how to put blacks in position yeah. no th that's important what you said about jagan because um he always did you know um you know tr try to have that appeal and, and so forth and and i think when he was president in 92 uh, after being s so long in the wilderness from 66 and then waiting to up until 1982 after so much fraud after so much um you know, uh, uh, oppression, and, and then he became president. I, I think, you know, everybody of all races in Ghana respected him um, yes. for that. And, and then and at his funeral, I remember when he died, it was 97, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? I mean, 
everybody, even PNC people, his political opponents, you know, and and the Afro uh, guy, they all paid respects to him. I I remember, you know, that national funeral in morning. and it was really it's when Janet Jagan, his wife, came in power. That's when the PNC started to make the place ungovernable and have all the riots and and it was it was with that i yes. i think it wasn't really under jagan himself under jagan i don't think um uh that chaos not, was not, not much in terms of civil uprising and all these yeah. um by the way she was shooting you drive a car going to the airport and you know a bunch of people inside there they start shooting them up in certain areas wow, wow. yeah and I, I think that says a lot about the necessity of that sort of principled leadership that Jagan yeah, always yeah, and, and, and Chetty I don't see us getting that at all from the PNC this particular team that's there yeah yeah Marcel yeah. Williams disposed of all the Indian lawyers in the Attorney General's chambers yeah. recently again he lost that case you must have read about Pratima Kisun as the Deputy Solicitor General yes yeah and Pratima Kisun's father Jailal Kisun senior counsel is known as a PNC supporter but Basil doesn't care yeah, yeah. want Indian people in his chambers. Yeah, yeah. the Attorney General's chambers. Yeah. Because I mean, what one thing that's that's I find as a Trinidadian, although you know we have a, a similar racial mix in terms of Africans and Indians being the the biggest groups, and and you know, and there's this whole thing about how many Indians are here, how many Africans are here, but 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 uh, in Guyana, um, it seems to be much more open to. Uh, for people to just, you know, be supremacist to say that you know this should be for black people, this should be yeah. for Indian people on both sides, you know. Whereas in Trinidad, nobody, people don't usually come out and say it, even if they believe it, mm -hmm. uh, because you, you you have this you know this commitment to liberal democrat, you know, these sort of liberal democratic ideas. But I, I don't know, maybe it's because of so Trinidadians are not socialism, so communism divided. as well. I'm not sure why. Trinidadians are not so racially divided as Guyanese. No, it's not. They're not. It's, it's not, not the all. same at all. Not the no. same at all. Wow. Well, you know, thanks for, for bringing us up to date, giving us, um, you know, some insight into what's going on and, and alerting us as to what the next potential conflict is because yes. the government has not, the parliament has not dissolved, government has not agreed that September 18th is a President last has day. not resigned. President's not resigned. So, so we're still, um, we're, we're still in for some constitutional crises here in Guyana. But uh, I, you know, thanks for that. Um, I, I wish the Guyanese people all the best. And I wish you personally all the best. Thank you, my friend. Thank to you. seeing your role in Guyanese politics because you have, you, you have tried to cross the divide, um, uh, both politically and uh, racially, ethnically. And that's very, very much needed. And, you know, I, I wish you all the best in your... Well, thank you. You know, I did not conclude the answer that, that, to the question you asked. Yes, I would like to go back to Guyana and continue practicing as a lawyer. And still, still be on some side of the political divide. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, I, 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 I will keep in touch with you, definitely. Sure, my brother. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And, and that's it for my Trinidadian brothers and sisters out there. I hope they don't ever have to go through what we are going through in Guyana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that um, we hope so too. <laughs> well, that's it this week uh, for this week's show on independent thought and freedom. Please join us again next week. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.